Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. So today we're going to be looking at 10 tips to speed up your progress in Blender. These tips are also going to be available on my Blender Everything website if you want a quick way to revisit them. So let's jump in. So the first tip is repeat action. You probably know about this. Any action you do, for example, duplicating this Shift D, uh, you can use Shift R to repeat that action. But uh, one thing you did know about is that uh, it can work with other things, not just duplicating objects you can also use it for rotation so for example if i duplicate this shift d i go directly into the grab or move command but i if i hit r for rotation that grab command will be cancelled and replaced with the rotation option so i can confirm that rotation and then repeat this and now you see that uh, my rotation will be uh, repeated this is not only limited to rotation you can also do this for scale so if i duplicate this and then go directly into scale mode I can rep confirm that and then repeat that action and you see that uh, that will be repeated as expected. It can also work in edit mode. So if I, let's say, insert this and hit R, I can repeat this several times. And uh, if I if I extrude this, I can extrude, I can repeat that several times as well. If I'm in edit mode, I can hold and control and then right click to any point to extrude a face to that point this doesn't look very useful but uh, where it is most useful is when you're working with edges or vertices so i'm just going to delete this so that i have this edge if say i have an image like this that i want to trace i can use this trick to just control left click to trace out this vertex and uh, this logo very easily just like that and it's not only limited to meshes you can also do it with curves so i can go into edit mode and just trace out the object i'm not being very precise but uh yeah tip number three you can use any surface as a pivot point so if i have a cube like this and i wanted to rotate it you see it will always be rotated around its pivot point but uh, if say i want the pivot point to be uh suzani's nose here i can do that by just using shift right clicking in the viewport and uh, select any surface and uh, the 3d cursor will be snapped to that point and now i can use the period key to get this pie menu and then i can select 3d cursor as the pivot point so that my 3d cursor is the pivot point and now i can rotate this around the pivot point this is also very useful in maybe you want to rotate this this at the point at, at uh, the corner there i can also do that and i just rotate it like that uh, this is also this option can also be useful in edit mode for example if i want to rotate rotate this circle around this around this point i can move my 3d cursor to that point like that and then now i can select this edge loop and rotate it around that point and if i move it here you can see that will also work you can also use the active vertex or active selection as your pivot point so by using the period key again to access the pivot point by menu so if i select active element then the active vertex will be my pivot point like that if i change the pivot point the active element to be this vertex uh, that can also be my pivot point if i select everything and uh, have this as my pivot point uh, that will be my pivot point uh if if i mean face mode and select this as my pivot as my active element uh, that will become my pivot point another tip if you have a collection of objects, say like this, uh, this house that is made up of different objects and also this house that is made up of different objects. And I just want to select this house, but uh, it's, it might be very difficult to select just the house, especially if I have other objects in the background. And actually, let me do that. I'm just going to duplicate this. A quick way to select just the objects in this collection, this house collection, select any object that is within that collection and then use Shift G and you'll get this select group menu. So you just select collection and it will select all the objects that are inside that collection and if we navigate to that you see that uh, in the outliner we have all the objects in that collection selected i can also do it to this shift g collection and because these were duplicated from this object which is in the same collection uh, those has these objects have also been uh, selected speaking of collections every collection you add in your scene you can use shift a to add it as an instance so for example you can see we have this collection we have this collection and we have this collection if we use shift a you can see under collection instances we have all these collections back here so i can just select any of these and uh, re-add this the entire collection as an instance so i can have multiple copies of this collection and uh, the great thing about instances is that uh, they don't require as much computation power as other objects so you can have as many as you want without incurring any extra cost 
and uh, the neat trick about this is that if I go to the original correct collection here, I can make edits to this and uh, they will be reflected in the collection instances as well. If you're working with the file browser and you want to access your Blender project file, just go into your path input and use forward slash twice to access the blend file. Now this works only on saved projects. If the project is not saved, it will go to your system home directory. But uh, if the project is saved, it will go directly to that project file. This is very useful, especially if you're selecting the output of your final render, you can access the output in the render settings and uh, then just type forward slash twice and it will take you directly to the project file. When working with animation, your viewport playback FPS is usually going to be, be lower than the intended FPS. My viewport FPS is 9 frames per second, but my intended frame rate is 60 frames per second. This can throw off your animation timing. So a great way to preview your animation at the intended frame rate is by rendering it via viewport rendering. This will render whatever you have selected as your render option in the viewport shading. And for example here, I'm in wireframe, but I'll, let me just use the solid mode uh, so that I can see the meshes easily. Also make sure you select the output folder, otherwise it will overwrite any renders you have in that folder. So I'll just create a new folder here, select and then viewport render. It will render the viewport directly how you are seeing it. If you want to render the camera animation as well, make sure that you are viewing the scene through the camera, otherwise it's just going to render directly what you're seeing from the viewport angle. Now to play back the viewport render, just go under render view animation and you see what the viewport has rendered. You can see and the frame rate is going to be the set frame rate in your output settings. If you have a large scene and you want to navigate it, try using the, the game key controls to navigate it by going under view, navigation, walk, navigation. This gives you controls similar to video game controls. So I can use W for moving forward, A to move left, D to move right and then S to move back. Q to move down, E to move up, and a middle mouse wheel to speed up my walk. To cancel, just hit escape or right select. If you're trying to render realistic glass, but it doesn't look correct, try adding a solidify modifier. So I'm going to use a glass material here to show the difference. This is how it usually looks. But if that's not the look you're going for, try adding a solidify modifier. The one on the left here is rendering as a glass solid object and the one on the right is rendering as a glass shell. And you can use the thickness option in the solidify modifier to determine the thickness of your glass. You can see the difference between other two. When working with textures, there are a few options you can use to extend the texture. As you know, textures have a limited size and sometimes they can't fit the size of your surface. If your surface is too big, you might have to tile the texture to get it to fit the entire surface. There are a few different tiling options. For example, if I add some mapping here to tile this here, you can see you can tile it like that, but uh, the tiling becomes too visible and it doesn't look as good. If you're using Blender 3.5, there is a new tiling option called mirror. This will mirror your texture in all the different directions. If you're working with a hair system and you're using an object as the hair like this, but you can't figure out the right rotation and you just want a quick and dirty way to make things look good, just select the object that you're instancing, tap into edit mode and rotate it in different directions to see if you get the right rotation. And uh, now I can rotate this in different axes until I get the right axis. This also in turn makes it easy for me to use things like the advanced setting and rotation uh, so the face is always going to be much easier to work with and uh, the randomization of face is also going to be much easier. If you want to create a pile of junk, use the rigid body system. Say, let me go to my asset library here and just get uh, go to my decals and uh, bring in a few junk objects, a few objects to add as, pi as junk here. By the way, if you want the asset library, I've discounted it to just dollars yeah i think it's a good alternative to the asset browser yes add a few of these say this is your pile of junk this is the junk you want to pile up all you need is to add them as a rigid object make sure that you apply the scale first go to object rigid body add active now if we play back they'll all just fall down like that and uh, if they're snapping if they're exploding like that uh, that means that uh, some of them are intersecting like this arcade here yeah, for something like an umbrella here, you could change its physics type 
is collision shape from convex hull from convex hull to say mesh and that will give you better collision so you want everything to fall directly down to have them pile up just create an, another a collision object in a shape of a bowel like this maybe even add a subdivision surface if you want bottom should be flat uh, this you can give a rigid body but type passive and the, the shape you want it to be mesh instead of convex because if you have it set to convex you see everything will just just fall flat on on the top of it but if you change this to mesh they will fall inside uh, the object uh, like that I'm going to scale this down a bit and then all you have to do is animate just animate this shrinking shrunk as well it can be squeezed into a pile and uh, make sure you have animated turned on for the collider after they settle down you can just select them and use the rigid body apply transformation that uh, that will reset their transformation to be at the final position they have settled in now then what you can do is remove the rigid body and then duplicate them again to create another pile the ones that have settled down you can select them again and give them a rigid body type passive so that they are included in the collision in the collision of the other rigid body the new rigid body you have duplicated so i'll give this rigid body active like that until you have a pile or collection so yeah that's one way to do it and those were some tips that i think can be very very useful again if you want to revisit other tips i have an article about it and uh, just gives you the screenshots of the different uh, options you have to use a full breakdown thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video